In tonight's headlines, flowers and dining take top spot as Hong Kong celebrates Mother's Day. Justice Secretary Paul Lam said an injunction over a protest song helps to find a red line as SAR authorities urge tech giant Google to take down the song. And in a tragic accident, a mainland tourist dies after falling off Land Rock Mountain. Family dim sum or Chinese stout dinner has long been a tradition for Mother's Day celebration in Hong Kong as all members gather together to express gratitude and spend time with their mothers. At a local Chinese restaurant, business during daytime has returned to above 90% of the pre-pandemic level, but bookings at dinner hours was disappointing. We used to host about 100 tables on Mother's Day, but today there are only 40 tables of customers, this Chinese restaurant manager said. With an upcoming public holiday on Wednesday, I assume a lot of customers would choose to go on a vacation during this period. EGL Tours did reveal that business has surged over the weekend. With a 20 to 30 percent increase in people signing up for two day tours to various parts of mainland China to celebrate the occasion. Up till last Tuesday, the local travel agency received more than 200 sign ups for a two day Zhongshan tour departing on Saturday. Some have chosen to take a five day holiday altogether and brought their mothers to Southeast Asia. Simon Wong, president of Hong Kong Federation of Restaurants and Related Trades, expects local restaurant business to drop by 15% as compared to last year, mainly because citizen spending mechanisms have changed after the pandemic. Chinese restaurants used to raise the price for Mother's Day's dinner in the past, but this year they are offering early bird promotions and discounts as well as free wine for those who purchase a meal set. Some restaurants have even decided to cut out offering combos. Citizens now choose to order a la carte instead, so they cancelled new sets altogether. Counting down till its partial redevelopment, the famous Mong Kok flower market saw flocks of citizens coming for roses and carnivores as a token of gratitude to their mothers and wives for taking care of the family. Though there is indeed some business, flower store owners aren't optimistic about the overall situation. Carnivores are sold as cheap as $38 for one and $60 for two. Some shops reveal that they have stocked up 50% less flowers than the previous year, and they have 20 to 30% less business compared to last year. Janice Yu, Cable News. Justice Secretary Paul Lam says authorities have asked internet service provider Google to keep their words to remove the length of the 2019 protest song Glory to Hong Kong from its search results, who earlier stated that they would take down a song upon a court order. The Court of Appeal last Wednesday granted an interim injunction Lam sought last year over the song, which has frequently been mistaken overseas for China's national anthem. Speaking on air this morning, Lam said the injunction will help define a red line and provide strong deterrence to whoever that is using this song to incite illegal seditious acts, including promoting Hong Kong independence. If people are touched by merely singing the song, there has to be an illegal motive behind it. The question is what goals and motives you are trying to reach with this song, he said. However, authorities are now suspicious of the delayed deletion of the 32 YouTube links to the now banned protest anthem, and hopes that the internet giants can speed up their actions, and if not, give a response as soon as possible. A 37-year-old man fell to his death while hiking at Lan Rock at noon. The hiker, a mainland tourist, started trekking along the trail 
with his group of about a dozen friends at 10 a.m., reportedly fell off a cliff while rock climbing. A government flying service helicopter then airlifted the man to Pamela Yod Nadaso Eastern Hospital, where he was later certified dead. Hiking experts have long warned that Lion Rock is not a suitable path for beginners for its steepness and rugged escarpments. Police are investigating the cause of the accident. UK Foreign Secretary David Cameron said at this stage Britain would not be following the United States and withholding arms supply to Israel. My view is that the right answer is to try and stop the fighting by having a hostage deal, achieving a pause in the fighting, and then using that to build a sustainable ceasefire without going back uh, to, to further conflict. That, I think, is the right answer, and that's why I'm always pushing on, on, on the Israelis and on everyone else. But the problem is it goes back to Hamas. Hamas have been offered a deal which would release hundreds of, of prisoners from Israeli jails that would provide a pause in the fighting to get desperately needed aid into Gaza, and they're not taking that deal. So the question really, I think, is for Hamas. You know, why are you allowing this suffering to go on when you could stop it now? Meanwhile, Israeli military spokesman Daniel Hagari said his country's defense forces are continuing its precise operation against Hamas in the southern Gaza city of Rafah. Israel ordered new evacuations in Rafah, forcing tens of thousands of more people to leave as it prepared to expand its military operation deeper into the city. The intensified Israeli offensive, meanwhile, killed 19 people overnight in the central Gaza city of Deir al-Bala. Women and children were among the dead. With truce negotiations stalled after the invasion of Rafah, a breakthrough for a ceasefire deal does not seem likely. Swiss rapper Nemo was crowned winner for this year's Eurovision Song Contest. The 24-year-old queer singer's song is about the journey of coming to terms with a non-binary identity, with hopes that the contest can live up to its promise and continue to stand for peace and dignity for every person in this world. Before the start of the extremely popular event, thousands of pro-Palestinian demonstrators joined a march through the streets of Sweden's third largest city, Malmo, which hosts this year's edition. Holding Palestinian flags and chanting anti-Israel slogans, the protesters demanded a boycott of Israel and a ceasefire in the seven-month-long war in Gaza. Though Eurovision's motto is united by music, it had its fair share of controversies. Protesters complained of double standards as the organizer, the European Broadcasting Union, had banned Russia from participation two years ago following its invasion of Ukraine. However, the same was not done when Israel invaded Gaza. Israeli contestant Eden Golan was allowed to perform in the finals. Demonstrators in the fan zone outside the venue jeered and booed Golan when she took the stage. Her song was almost disqualified after the organizers said it violated the ban on politicized lyrics, with references to the Hamas attack on Israel last year. Golan had to change some of the lyrics in order to compete and finished in fifth. Best Lang Cable News. Russia has intensified its offensive in the town of Vovchansk in northeastern Ukraine with renewed ground assaults in the Kharkiv region. The Russians launched a battalion strength attack along a 60-kilometer stretch of the border, claiming to occupy several villages, creating a new buffer zone along the frontier. Airstrikes and missile attacks pummeled Vauchans and its surrounding areas yesterday, but there were no reports of any deaths or injuries. <laughs> Local police joined in the rescue efforts, evacuating injured residents and the elderly. 
The latest attack is yet another example of how thinly Ukrainian forces are stretched with much less artillery than the Russians and above all, a lack of soldiers. I was lying on the couch when everything fell on me, said this deaf woman, who was evacuated to safety and taken to a shelter by local volunteers. She was not the only one, as many residents from villages nearby to Wauchanks were also cleared after fears of more Russian attacks. Meanwhile, three people were killed and eight others injured, including a child in the Russian-occupied city of Donetsk yesterday after a missile struck a restaurant building. A spokesman for the Russian state broadcaster said the attack was carried out by Ukraine using U.S.-supplied artillery.